Hello everyone. Now, in the previous video, I introduced you to the period three theorem, right? Period three implies chaos. Now, we think about what that actually says. It says, implies chaos. What is it that is being implied? Well, with the period three theorem, it's implying that we've got cyclic points of every single other period, right? As long as you've got a three cycle, you've got a K cycle for every K greater than or equal to one. Does that really imply chaos, right? Or is it just that things are complicated, right? Does chaos actually have a definition? Or is it just you know it when you see it? Well, the answer to this is a little bit fuzzy. And a lot of, and to different people, chaos means different things. But there are some widely agreed upon aspects of chaotic systems now in mathematics. Now, through about the 80s, there was a lot of arguments and, and trying to fine tune the definitions of these things. But, you know, over the years, we've really sort of smoothed this out. We have a pretty good idea of what it means to be a chaotic system. Now, in particular, today we're going to talk about the properties of a chaotic system, and we're going to talk about them in the context of Devaney's definition of chaos. Now, that's Robert Devaney or Bob Devaney from Boston University, a classic researcher in dynamical systems, a pioneer of chaotic dynamical systems. So before we can get into these properties, we need to actually introduce a definition first. Now, again, we, this is a definition that came from topology. And we're going to say that a function, so a function f is topologically topologically transitive okay so when i say something's topologically transitive it means that if given any two open sets u and v then there exists an n greater than or equal to 1 such that iterating the interval v will necessarily intersect the interval u eventually. Okay? So a few things on this, right? I purposely did not state the space. This would actually work for any topological space. Now, primarily, we are going to be applying these to one-dimensional dynamical systems, so intervals most of the time. So you can always think of these open sets, if, you, if you're not familiar with topology, as just open intervals for now. That's perfectly acceptable. We're going to work through these things, and you're going to see how this works, if you're not familiar with topology. If you are familiar with topology, then you probably understand that open sets can be much more general, right? They're defined in terms of a topology itself, and F just needs to be a mapping from a topological space back to itself. That's why I said that this is actually coming from topology, right? This is a much more general definition. Nonetheless, you know, you can keep, keep this in your mind. Uh, now, here is what we will call a chaotic system. So a dynamical system, a dyne system, xn plus 1 is equal to f of xn. Again, I am purposely not putting in the phase space here. If it's an interval or if it's just a general topological space, this always works. Is chaotic. Again, this is this is Devaney's definition of chaotic. If, well, we have three conditions. One, F has sensitive dependence on initial conditions. How do we quantify that? That is a positive Lyapunov exponent. We've already seen that piece. Two, periodic points, so cyclic points, periodic points, points of F are dense. And here I am saying they are dense in the, the phase space, right? So if you have a, a map from an interval back to another interval, then they have to be dense in that interval. If you have a general topo topological space, well, then density has a whole different uh, or a, whole, a much more general meaning in topology. And again, you can keep these things in your mind depending on what your level of mathematics is here. But again, 
Periodic points of F are dense. Okay, so that means that I have to have probably infinitely many of them, especially if I'm talking about an, uh, a interval mapping. And one more, based on our new definition, F is topologically, logically transitive. Okay. Now, topologically transitive, this means that things are really getting sort of mixed up, right? Everybody is being sort of thrown together. This is similar to ergodicity of a system. Sometimes uh, mixing is a related concept, again, depending on your level of uh, understanding from topology and from dynamical systems that you're bringing to this thing. But typically, these are the three conditions that can be observed in a chaotic system, okay? F has sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Again, we can quantify that with the Lyapunov exponent. You have periodic points of F are dense, right? So we have to have infinitely many of them inside of the space. And F is topologically transitive. Okay, great. Let's do an example. Let's prove that we have a chaotic system. And we're gonna do it on a really simple one because a lot of times, you know, like everything in dynamical systems, the hard examples are very hard and a lot of them can't be solved. So we're gonna do a simple, simple example. Let's consider, okay, let's consider the expanding circle map, okay? So my map is going to take the circle S1 back into the circle S1 by, okay, so I'm gonna do it in a complex variable. I'm gonna take Z and map to Z squared. So this is also equivalent so I'm, I'm using a complex number here, Z, right? I'm using S being the, the circle in the complex plane, for example, or it could be R2, it doesn't matter. Uh, but equivalently, you could write, so or, if you write Z in polar form using Euler's formula, then this is the same as saying theta goes to two theta. So that means that we could equivalently write this mapping. So equivalently, so equivalently, f can just be thought of as a, a function theta, which is just two theta modulo two pi, right? We have this modulo arithmetic here because of course, once we go around the circle, we have to restart. This is something similar to what we saw at the beginning of this, the, uh, the, this course where we saw flows on the circle. The only difference here is that now you just have discrete jumps around the circle. Same basic process, right? And again, you sort of, this, you can always think about this as the interval from zero to two pi, where you just sort of join up the endpoints. So you can think about, you know, open sets, these are just open intervals, right? Everything sort of follows. But just so that we have a pretty good understanding of this thing, let's just sort of sketch it out, right? What do we have here? Again, I, the original mapping was posed in terms of the complex plane. So, okay. And so now, basically what you're doing is you take a point on this thing, Z, which has an angle theta, and you double that up. So then you, you would bring it forward to maybe, say, somewhere, uh, let's say, right around here, which gives you 2 theta, which is just z squared, okay? So it's an angle doubling formula. And again, if you, if you write this thing as an interval map, so you could say, or, well, you can always think of it as an interval from zero to two pi, and this would go all the way up to two pi. Well, this thing just is a piecewise function that just coats the interval twice, right? So it depends on how you wanna think about this. If you think about this in terms of theta, or if you think about it in the complex plane in terms of the unit circle. So here's my claim. I claim that this map is chaotic. And therefore, that means that I've got to check these three conditions, right? I have to ask myself, 
Is it possible that all three of these conditions are met? So let's start with sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Remember we said that in order to confirm this, we can use the Lyapunov exponent, okay? So here, well, remember the Lyapunov exponent is given by f prime evaluated at any sort of orbit or any infinite orbit of this dynamical system. Now here's the beauty. F prime of theta, again, I'm gonna use the theta formulation because it's easier. This is just equal to two for all theta. So this tells me that the Lyapunov exponent, well, this thing is lambda equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, remember you have this sort of average here, and then, uh, sorry, j equal to zero to n minus one of f prime of, let's say, theta j, right? Uh, sorry, I have a logarithm here as well, pardon me. And this is just equal to the logarithm of two because every single a uh, piece of this sum is a logarithm of 2, so you just add up a bunch of logarithms of 2 n times, and you divide by n, you get log 2, which, since 2 is greater than 1, this thing is positive, which tells us sensitive dependence. Okay, I squeezed it in, maybe you don't like that. I won't do it again. But that's good, right? That tells me that I've got sensitive dependence on initial conditions, so check one. Okay, let's look at more. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say let P sub N equal to all of the thetas in zero to two pi such that fn of theta is equal to theta again. Okay, so what is this? This is all of the, the uh, points in the interval that come back to themselves after n iterations. Now, this is not all of the n cycles. This includes the n cycles, but also say fixed points are in every pn, right? Because if a fixed point comes back to itself after one iteration, it also comes back to itself after 100, right? So this is bigger than just all of the n cycles. And let's let P just be the union over all n's. Okay, so what P is, this is the set of all periodic points in the interval zero to two pi of my mapping two theta mod two pi. Okay, so now let's try and analyze this. So now, fn of theta is equal to 2n times theta, right? All I'm doing is multiplying by 2 each time. Of course, uh, this is taken modulo 2 pi, right? But it's just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 n times uh, times theta, which tells us that if I have fn of theta equal to theta, then I've got 2n theta is equal to theta plus, now be careful here, I've got two pi k, right? Where k is some integer. Again, we have to account for that modulo, right? That periodicity going around the circle. And so that means that I can actually rearrange this. So, hence, um, this tells me that 2n minus 1 theta is equal to, okay, this marker is dead, uh, 2 pi k, which is the same as just saying that theta is equal to uh, 2 pi k over 2n minus 1 uh, for all 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to 2n minus 1. So, what does this actually mean for us? Well, this tells us 
that theta is in Pn, right? Remember my set of all uh, points that come back to themselves after n iterations. If and only if theta is a 2n minus first root of unity. And in this case, uh, I'm not going to actually prove that these things are dense, but you can probably figure it out, right? The roots of unity, they're equally spaced along the circle here, right? So the, the uh, fourth roots of, of unity, zero uh, pi, uh, sorry, zero pi over two pi, three pi over two. For example, the more you increase n, the more they get evenly packed into this circle. And so, of course, you know, uh, if n is equal to 100, you, I mean, you've got tons and tons of points equally spaced here. It's probably pretty easy for you to see that these things are dense. Proving this is dense might take a little bit more work. And so uh, I'm not going to actually prove it, but I'm going to tell you uh, that basically this tells you that Pn, or sorry, the set P is just all of the thetas in 0 to 2 pi such that there exists an n greater than or equal to 1 and a k between 0 and 2n minus 1 with theta equal to 2 pi k over 2n minus 1. Which, again, I'm going to tell you without proof, is dense, is dense in uh, 0 to 2 pi. All right, or S1, however you want to think about it. Okay, so I didn't I didn't fill out the entire proof here, but I think that you could probably believe me. I hope that you don't think that I'm I'm just trying to trick you. Okay, so that's good. That's two. Now I just need topologically transitive. Okay, let's say let U be an interval. All right, I need an open and set, so let's take this to be an interval of length. Okay, let's say delta. Doesn't matter how small, how big, it just be an interval in 0 to 2 pi of length delta. Well, then, what do we get? Well, then, Fn of u is also an interval of length 2 to the n times delta, right? So again, you start with some tiny little interval, and basically you just double the length of that interval over and over and over again. But 0 to 2 pi is a finite interval. Eventually, you're going to stretch over and come back around. So that tells you that eventually there's an n large enough that you cover the whole interval. And that tells you you've got to intersect every other open set. You know, once you cover the whole interval then you intersect the whole interval. And that way, if there's another open set, you have to hit it. So that means that there is definitely an N big enough that will give you this topological transity, transitivity, which gives you all three conditions met. And that tells you that this, uh, that this circle expanding or this, this angle doubling map, really, really, really simple map, but turns out to be chaotic. That is pretty cool, right? That is an extremely simple looking map where you're just sort of doubling the angle each time you are you know, applying this mapping here. Turns out to be chaotic by the definition of Devaney, by these properties, right? It has sensitive dependence on initial conditions as measured by the Lyapunov exponent. It has uh, dense periodic points in the interval zero to pi or on the circle S1. It's also topologically exp uh, transitive, and that just comes from the fact that it's like massively expanding. So in practice, it's very hard to confirm these things, right? So we have to work with relatively simple mappings. But sometimes with computational aids, we can get some information, or we can see that, uh, for example, we can estimate the Lyapunov exponent from data from the system, and that can help us to determine whether or not this thing might be chaotic. If we can rule... Uh, rule that it has sensitive dependence on initial conditions or not. 
But in practice, this is a mathematical definition. It can be used, it can be applied to a number of different mappings. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can take relatively complicated systems and make them simple using symbolic dynamics. And we can apply the definition of chaos to the symbolic dynamics in order to infer something interesting about a more complicated system. So I'll see you in the next video, everybody.